What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC. Oh, you can't even see it. Well, it's there. Uh, we're checking out the 6x6 kit from Hobby Details for the TRX 4M. This uh, little kit here lets you add on extra chassis rails, shocks, axle. It's got the pass-through, all that good stuff so you can make it a 6x6. We've got a video on some bolt-on portals. These guys here, these are the extra set. We got a, another set for the 6x6. But right now the truck's got just the four on them. That video is right over here. You can check it out. These portals are brass. They add a ton of weight and they don't have a, a lot of slop, so pretty good. Um, but definitely check out that video if you're interested. We're gonna open this stuff up and we're gonna put this little kit together and then we'll slap it on the truck. We are waiting on some uh, wheels and tires because we need another set of wheels and tires. We did get these, but they don't they don't match the wheels we're gonna be running. So it doesn't make any sense to run those. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. So here's everything we've got. We got our extended chassis rails. These things are brass, so that's interesting. We also have our link mounts. The link mounts drop down below and your links attach. Uh, our link ends, our ball joints for our link ends, our links, shocks, some O-rings and ball joints, our drive shafts, male and female, some axle shafts for our axle housing here, the extra axle housing with our ring and pinion and bearings, comes with bearings, all that, our diff cover, uh, the diff cover is on the output shaft side, so it does have kind of this uh, curry style uh, axle housing. Our shock towers, which are brass as well. Uh, the housing is not brass, so let's see. Brass, brass, I believe these are brass. I don't know. It's hard to tell. They're yellow. They kind of look brass. Maybe they're just yellow coated aluminum, because they're not like super heavy. Uh, they have some weight though. Um, either way, and then this guy's brass. So there's going to be some extra weight here, but if you know the truck we're putting it on from the other video, it is super brassed out. So figured, why not? We'll just go real heavy with this guy, uh, have some fun with it. We really want to show this little kit off. It's a pretty cool little kit. comes with everything you need. It is a little pricey, but uh, it's definitely a, a cool one, especially if you're looking for a 6x6. Now, these are aluminum, so it's interesting they chose to do these in aluminum, uh, but this in brass, I don't know. I don't know what their logic is there. I would think you'd want the lowest part brass, the highest part aluminum but it is what it is. So we're gonna throw this little guy together. Pretty much you can assemble it all off of the truck. You can just assemble it on these chassis rails. Um, show you the picture real quick. That's kind of what it looks like when it's done. And then we'll uh, throw it on the truck. Should be pretty cool. Now, because we're going a lot of metal into metal here, we're gonna be using some red Loctite. Just throw it in our cap here. That gives us the ability to just dip it on and throw it in the, in the screw hole. Pretty simple. We're gonna start with our link mount here since you're going into brass well i guess we're going to aluminum here but when you go into brass just know that brass is a pretty soft metal so don't cross thread make sure you kind of back out before you go in even on aluminum we do that just to make sure that we're not going to strip anything or cross thread anything okay so we'll just go ahead and do one whole side let's see what's next shock towers so the shock towers are the same, they're symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which side you put on which, I guess, technically. As long as you've got the got it sitting in the, in the slot of the rail, you should be good to go there. A few moments later. Boom. Alrighty, we got both sides done. Nice and symmetrical, except for the shock towers. Like I said, they are not symmetrical because of the. I think they're meant to mount the stock ESC, which is opposite like that. So that works. Uh, remember, these are brass. So like I said earlier, when you're trying to thread your screw in, if it feels like it's binding or you're cross-threaded or something, back it out. Try to go in again. Don't force it. Um, brass is very sticky. We did have to, on one of these holes, we screwed in through the backside just to kind of open the hole up a little bit because it was binding so much when we were trying to screw it in. I don't know if I cross-threaded it or wet. You know, I do this all the time, and even I sometimes will cross thread things, or if it was just a bad threading in there. So we just threaded it in through the back to kind of open it up, backed it back out, then took a new screw. Well, one of the other screws put it in, seemed fine, so we were good to go. And then that screw that we first put in, we put in the other one, and we were good. So there was no no messing up threads. Um, but yeah, just be aware of that. Don't force something if it's not going to do it. Try from a different, different angle, different direction. You know, try a different screw, stuff like that. All right, so we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and get our 
ball joints put into all of our links here and uh, our shocks. So these brass ball joints look like they're the same on both ends. Sometimes they have a larger flanged side. These ones look like they're the same on both ends. Um, actually, go ahead and tighten these down. Are these metal? Yeah, these are metal link ends, so just be aware of that. Make sure they're nice and tight. That one was loose. Oh, yeah, see, that one's pretty loose too, so we'll just tighten them up a little bit. A little spacer on there. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and start getting our O rings on. I found the easy way to put on O rings is to just kind of put that link end on your driver, and then you can push it through. So the shock ball joints do have a flange side. I don't know if you can see that easily on camera, but one side is larger than the other. The side here is larger than this side. So just be aware you want that to be the side that is the outside when you mount your shocks. Now, when we put these ball joints into these, it doesn't matter which side they're in realistically. Um, so we'll just go ahead and throw one in there. But then once you do go to put the shock mount in and you're putting your screw through, you want the screw to be on the going into the flange side. So that flange side is there. That way, when the shock's mounted, since it's not a captured mount, the shock doesn't just pull off if the O-ring breaks, right? Because if your O-ring breaks on this side, your shock could go that way. But because we're using the flange on the outside, it won't come off. Hope that makes sense. Oh, well, looks like our little O-ring is a little loose on that guy. A little loosey-goosey. Looks like the O-rings are kind of loose in general. That's okay. They don't need to be super tight, especially once the screw's on there and they're mounted. It's not going anywhere. Seems okay. So we're going to go ahead and get the rest of the joints in there and we'll be back. I do want to point out that these shocks feel really smooth. They feel real good. Um, I don't know how stiff these springs are for how heavy our truck's going to be. These are probably going to be fine because our truck's pretty heavy and these feel fairly stiff. But I, the smooth operation is definitely, well, smooth. The operation of it is smooth. So that's good. It's a smooth operator. Um, also, they do have adjustable preload, which is nice. So we'll be able to utilize that if we need to. But yeah, overall, very smooth feeling when I put pressure on them, like I'm pushing down. They still, they still are working smooth. They're not binding. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. And they're oil filled, obviously they're they're dampened. So we'll go ahead and look at the axle and the ring and pinion next. We do have all of our links and shocks, ball joints mounted up. We're good to go. We're gonna take a look at our original truck here. Remember, we're on portal, so things move backwards. You know, if we're spinning one direction, these are gonna spin the other. Just keep that in mind depending on if you're in portals or not. But the, the simple rule is put your diff ring and pinion on the same side. So if we have our output shaft here and our tires are spinning this way, right? That's forward. You can see the direction of our shaft. It's gonna be spinning like that, which means our ring in here, because we're on portals, is going the opposite direction. It's spinning this way, right? That's gonna turn our shaft the opposite direction of this. Okay, so our, our output shaft's gonna be spinning this way. It's gonna be hard to tell from video, guys. You might just have to mess with it. If you put it in backwards, all you gotta do is flip your ring and pinion to the other side. Okay. But with our shaft spinning opposite, that means this guy should be in here like so. It's gonna be spinning that way. We actually will want our shaft on the opposite side of this shaft or the uh, ring and pinion opposite side of this ring and pinion. Okay, so when we put our guy together here, should be like so. At least for this one, again, opposite of what we've got currently going on. You're also gonna wanna make sure you grease up your ring and pinion because it doesn't have any grease. Obviously you're building it right now. that guy up. 
Got our bearings in there. Go ahead and get our bearings in here as well. And again, we'll lock tight metal into metal. You have four cap heads and four button heads. You're going to use the cap heads for your diff. The button heads are meant for the ends here. Um, also, the longer cap head, because there's two different sizes. One's a little longer than the other, I believe. Are they longer? Yeah, just a little bit. That longer one is going to go on the bottom. You have more meat there. And then the shorter ones will go along the top. Now, because we're using the portals here, we won't be using these drive shafts or uh, axle shafts. But if you were, they just slide right in. You put your bearings in there, and then you put your screws on top. All right, so we're not going to be using these bearings because we're using the portals, and they just kind of, the bearings are replaced with the, the portal housing. We should be able to just screw this guy right on there. No problem. We are going to have to open these guys up and there's a screw that goes into here. So we'll do that as well. All right. So our axles all together now. And if you're not using the six by six, yours will be different and your ring uh, and pinion will be flipped the other way. But there we go. And now we can start to put together our links and our shocks and our axles all together. So we'll go ahead and just throw, let's see these links. Are they the same length? I believe they're the same length all around upper and lower. Yeah, they are. Some of the other trucks, the links are different lengths, upper and lower. So just wanted to make sure. Go ahead and throw our uppers in here. Let's see which side is threaded. This side's threaded, okay. Okay. Go ahead and do our shocks and links. Remember, flange side out. Oh, what am I doing? The link is captured. Here we go. You want to make sure everything's as loose as possible. Our uppers feel a little stiff here. Um, you can always remove an O-ring if things are too stiff for your liking. And this isn't meant to be a crazy, crazy competitive rig. So I think we're, we're, we're plenty loose here. We're good. Like I said, these uppers could be maybe adjusted a little. Oh, it looks like we're rubbing just a little bit, actually, is what's causing it. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of rubbing there. That's okay. That'll break in over time. It's actually breaking in as I do it right now. It's just barely rubbing on the, the clear or the uh, powder coat. But yeah, we should be good. Oh yeah, that's way better now. Cool. All right. So we got that all set up. Now we do our links onto our chassis, our shocks onto our chassis. Let's put this side. Gonna be like so. Let's see. Yep, just like that. There are spacers for the shocks. So you'll definitely need to make sure you use those. We're gonna need some more, some more of this stuff here. So we're gonna go ahead and just mount the shock in the middle position for now. Once it's on the truck, we can adjust that position, but for now, it'll just go there, right in the middle. And then our links here. Do a lower link. Let's 
So with the way this is set up, I do kind of wish that these ball joints had a larger flange, because if this O-ring breaks, these are going to come right off. So that is something to be aware of. Um, you might be able to find some flanged ball links there. I'm sure they're out there. I'm not sure the exact size of these off the top of my head. This is two millimeter. All right, so there's one side. That's how you should be looking. We'll get the other side on. We'll be back. More moments later. Ta -da! And then we got these, uh, these four screws are for when we mount it to the chassis. So this will mount onto the chassis. Right here on the end. Pink. Once we get this body off. And um, yeah, pretty slick. Definitely feels smooth. I mean, it's not together yet, right? But I can still feel it. It feels smooth. I like it. All right, let's, um, let's go ahead and get our body off of our truck. And get these things mounted to the chassis. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and pop off, I guess, the whole rear piece. Hmm, that means our body mount does not work anymore. That's fine. We're not going to be using the body in that capacity anyway. So I'll go ahead and pull this guy out. All right. So our bumper and mount's gone. Now we just have our exposed chassis rails. Um, we actually had to send off one of our wheels and then the set of tires as well as some other 1.33, because these are 1.33s. Um, we show them in that video as well. But uh, we had to send them off to Flub RC to make some slime ball inserts. So they, uh, yeah, got some slime ball inserts coming for them. That will be super cool. And let's see. Should just mount right on there just like so get our four screws in and then we'll take a look-see all right all mounted up sweet we're definitely gonna have to adjust our shocks because these are way lower you can just see it already <laughs> anyway we'll, we'll get there um we're gonna go ahead and throw our bumper back on even though we're not going to be using the mount, it'll at least help stabilize this. So we definitely want to get that back on there. Nice. I am digging it. These wheels are so cool, guys. These are DJ Crawler wheels. They are super slick looking. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, do something with the shock here. We can move it in. Let's get our drive shaft in before we start messing with that stuff. Um, yeah, these axles feel pretty smooth. I dig it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove our diff cover here and get our ring and pinion output shaft set up. I think the easiest thing to do here is just to pop the top screw off, holding the upper links, and that'll allow us to kind of rotate the entire axle and get our diff cover unscrewed. Hoping that's all it's going to take. We'll see. Yeah, that lets us rotate it enough to be able to unscrew those guys. Okay. There we go. Go ahead and get this guy set up. Bam. Bam. We're going to grease this up a little bit more. So there's a little bit in there, but we can always use more, right? It never hurts to have too much, unless you're causing binding or something crazy with the too much. But yeah, we should be good here. I think I'll just slide right in. Right. You can either use the screws that came with or the screws that we already had. We'll just go ahead and use the screws we already had in there. And where did my Loctite go? A little bit. I'll put shaft covers all on. Now we're going to do the drive shaft. These are some beefy drive shafts that they come with. Man. This is a 1.5 pin so that's cool 
That's nice. I like that more than just a grub screw or a regular screw for sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and do, yeah, we'll do, do it like this with our male side here, I guess. Doesn't really matter on, on this one. Let's try to phase these the same though. Let's see, rotate this. So they're the same. It's not really gonna matter here either, but just my OCD so that we're facing the same direction. Get a little bit more Loctite here, just a, a tad. Just a tad. Nice. Okay, now make sure you phase your drive shaft, which means they're facing the same direction. Um, your ears or the screws, either way works. But you just want to make sure that they're in phase like this, not like this. That'd be out of phase. See how the ears don't line up. That just helps reduce vibration at higher speeds. Not such a big deal on crawlers, but on higher speed rigs, it definitely will cause vibration and whatnot if they're not in phase. I just like to have them in phase. It helps prevent binding that could happen. It reduces it. It's not going to prevent it. If there's binding, it could still happen, but um, it'll definitely reduce the potential for binding. And uh, yeah, I dig that for sure. Plus, just a good habit to be in. All right. Now we just need to get our upper links back on there. So we got plenty of clearance in there. That's good. We're, we're checking clearance there when it's fully compressed, making sure it's not bottoming out. If it is, you have to shorten your drive shaft or lengthen your wheelbase. Either way. But yeah, seems good. Oh, we fell out. That's okay. Go ahead and get our upper links back in and we'll take a look at it. All right. We're all good. Now we do have a little problem here and that is that I think we have too much travel in this axle here and it's going to cause some issues. See how we drop a ton there? That means if we then, well, maybe we'll just lower this one first, but if we, if we were to push up on this, we'll definitely lose our drive shaft. Bloop. See that? So we're going to make some adjustments there and we'll show you what we end up with. I think we're just going to lower these rear shocks. It's a good start. Um, and then we might raise this one or move it back one so there's not quite as much. Remember, the more angled you have your shocks in, right? So if you go from here to here, you're going to end up with more travel in your, your axle um, and more articulation, more flex, if you will. But it also means your truck's going to be more sloppy. So you kind of want to reduce that some. You don't want it to, well, you don't want to reduce it. You want it at a good balance, right? Um, if it's too much, you want to reduce it, obviously. But what we've got going on here with the 6x6 six six probably will be a little too much. So we'll try dropping this down all the way to here. And see how we look see if we can keep our articulation or our, our travel without losing our drive shaft if we are losing our drive shaft we're gonna have to straighten up our shocks a little raise them up a little it kind of ends up lowering the truck overall just a little bit but hopefully we won't be losing our drive shaft so we're gonna have an issue here because our shocks are such drastically different lengths these shocks here i believe these are in joras i don't remember but they're much longer this is fully extended here and this is fully extended you can see yeah, let's see if i can get it there we go I don't know if you can see how much longer that is. Um, so not necessarily ideal there. Even if we moved it all the way up, it's still just so much longer than the rear shock here. So we're going to probably have to swap these out to something a little shorter. Um, yeah, even when these are at the highest position here, they're just it's too much. It's going to end up pulling out even so. Um, I mean, I can try it real quick, try to do both sides. Cause sometimes when it's just one side, it's not, doesn't really show you enough, but pretty sure these are just going to be way too long. Ideally, you'd have the exact same shocks front and rear, and at least in the back here, you can do something different at the front if you want, but these back two, you kind of want to make sure they're similar. Let's see if I, even if I move this here, that's just going to give us less room. Let's see, this will pull it up more. Technically we will have more left and right travel. Let's see. Another thing too, is I think these links. Um, you can see our, our uh, let's go this way. Our drive shaft is pointing quite a bit down, like way down, right? Uh, because these are clocked. Now, ideally, we're, we'll be sitting right about here, so that won't be too bad. But this axle is slightly clocked because these links cause it to turn like this. It's trying to tuck the drive shaft, the front drive shaft, up because normally it's not a six by six, right? So that's a good thing. But now it's clocked so much that it pushes this down. So unfortunately, these links kind of cause that issue and we can't really adjust them so we're gonna have to reduce the amount of travel we have for sure 
just to help reduce this uh, angle on the pinion on the output shaft. So we got both switched. Like I said, sometimes it's hard to tell when you just do one, and we are able to do this without uh, losing our drive shaft. Now that's a lot of angle there, probably not ideal, but um, better than it was. At least we're not losing our drive shaft. I'm gonna go ahead and drop these down one more to the very bottom corner right there, and we'll see if that helps. Uh, yeah, again, the, the real answer to properly do it is to have the same shocks front and back. And we'll probably do that at some point. I'm just trying to show it with the way this kit comes. Um, but again, if you have a stock rig with stock shocks, it'll be fine because these are longer than stock, the ones that uh, these endure us here. So that's part of the issue. I'm going to scoot them back. All right, that's much better. Basically equal. We are going to have more travel here. It's probably going to compress a little bit more. It's actually bottoming out, hitting our um, <laughs> hitting our ESC, but that's fine. Totally works. It's still kind of hanging a little low on that drive shaft. I wish we could clock these just a little bit. If I could just move these rears or these upper rears in just the tiniest bit or move this one out just like one millimeter, maybe two millimeters, it would totally change the angle of this uh, pinion output right here. But this will do for now. When it's sitting, it's going to kind of have some droop on it, so it's not going to be that much. Only under complete articulation is it going to have kind of that issue. We almost hit when we do this, but we do hit a little bit, just a little tiny bit. But again, we're articulating quite a bit more than we should with a six by six, to be honest. And actually, it only hits if you really push it. So that's good, though. There's clearance in there for all that. It's a lot of movement. And that's a lot of flex on a six by six. Anyway, all right, cool. So now we're just waiting on our wheels and tires and flubs to come back, and then we got to figure out what kind of what we're gonna do with the body. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with the body. One thing I like to always try and do is test things along the way. We didn't really test as much with the electronics as we probably could have. Um, but let's just go ahead and look now. Hmm. Something's definitely, what was that? Hmm, something was kind of binding there for a second. Well, seems fine, I guess. Yeah, seems good. Ooh, see that? We're spinning in there. We may need to shim our, uh, our pinion. All right, guys, I think I found the issue here. So when I was, I have an extra set of axle housings here um, that are aluminum. They're not Enjoras, but they're similar. These are actually Mias. But when I would put the um, Hobby Details output shaft cover on, it was only going down like that far. See how there's a gap there? And it wouldn't go all the way in. And so what that's probably doing, obviously, is your pinion sitting in there is not being pushed all the way up against the ring, okay? Because there's you know, um, maybe a half millimeter, half millimeter gap. It was actually more like that. It was, it was pretty significant. It was basically the entire inner lip. There's a lip here. See this lip? The entire inner lip was, was it's too big for the inner lip here. And it wouldn't fit all the way down in. It wouldn't key all the way in. So I took a Dremel, a little grind wheel. And I just ground away at the lip a little bit. Taking it all the way around. Took it in. it down and now she fits nice and flush so that should help with that uh that issue this fits nice and flush on this guy we'll, we'll try it on here see what it looks like a 
Ooh, still tight on the Andorra. Yeah, still doesn't want to go all the way down. You can see how much of a gap there was. I didn't realize it when we put it on, because it seemed like it was slotted all the way down. But yeah, there's quite a bit of gap there. Man. So the Enjora is even tighter. So we'll have to take off some more. We'll keep going until it fits. All right, we took off a good amount at this point. We even uh, shaved down the, the right here just a little bit. Basically took off the coating. We've noticed that a lot of times, um, sometimes it's just the coating that's causing issues because they don't account for the thickness in the coating. But now we are totally able to go all the way on, no problem. We don't have to push or force or, it's not too tight. It's nice and snug, boom and it fits nice and flush. So hopefully that's gonna help with our ring and pinion engagement. And if there's still issues, then we will have to shim it, um, basically pushing it closer to the pinion or the ring itself, pushing the pinion closer to the ring. Yeah, that actually feels a lot better. Hopefully it's not too close now, but I think we're good. So we're gonna go ahead and screw it back in. We'll see how we're doing. All right, so it's much smoother now. Just had to get it basically shimmed correctly. Um, you could just shim the pinion forward to make sure it engages the ring, but then you might have issues with the bearing seats. So that's kind of why we chose to grind this down so that we could get it to sit more flush. Um, we might've taken a little too much off because it seemed like it was a little tight. So we had to back these screws off just a tiny bit um, so that there wasn't binding. But it's, it's better now. It's just a matter of adjusting. And I'm sure your axle housings are going to be a little bit different than mine. And you're using a different ring and pin, different brand ring and pinion and stuff like that. You could have compatibility issues. So just be aware. You might have to do some adjustments. But much better now. And it's not slipping. So we're good. So another thing you need to make sure you're aware of is your output shafts and your ring and pinion gearing, right? You need to make sure that all of these are the same gearing or they're going to run at different speeds. Um, right now, I think we've got, so uh, we've got Enjoras in here. They're the helicals. That's another thing too. Make sure, make sure you're not mixing the straight spline pinions and rings with the helical ones because you'll just tear it up. It'll just, it'll just destroy the gearing. Um, anyway, so here we've got the Enjoras front and rear. Um, we're running a 24 T ring with a 10. Yeah, this, this one's a 10, this one's a 12. So these are 24 T, uh, 10 T, so 24 tens. And we have them on the tens on the front and the back. So you would assume that the output's gonna be the same, right? But because this gearing is different, it's creating an underdrive slash overdrive situation. So you can see here, we got marks on our tires. Our front and our rear are the same, or front and middle anyway. You can see they can match up the same every time. But then that rear, the two rears don't. You can see they're matched right now, right? They're going the same direction right now, whereas these two are meeting up in the middle. Um, but as you go, that rear most is definitely faster. And that's because we've got the gears that came with this uh, in here. So what we have to do is either switch these out to the same ratio as this, or switch this out to the same ratio as these. Um, now we don't want, this is clearly faster than the front, right? The rearmost is faster than the front as well, because the front and the middle are the same. Well, they're a little different, they're off, hold on. Where are we overdriven here? Is the front faster? Yeah, it looks like we have a little bit of overdrive in the front compared to the middle. Yeah, not much, just a little bit. I'm not sure. I don't remember what the gears in the front are. There we go. They're matched up again. Okay, so our front and our middle, our front is overdriven just a little bit, which is fine, but we need the back two to be the same. So we're going to go ahead and swap out this rearmost ring and pinion with another 2410 ring and pinion. That way it matches all three pinions there and the two rings match. And that'll give us a little bit of overdrive in the front. All right, so just be aware of that situation when you're installing this, that if you don't have the same gearing as what comes with it, you're going to have to change your gearing either in your center axle and potentially front axle, or at least in the rear axle to match what you've got here. Ideally, you want some overdrive or underdrive in the rear, overdrive in the front, which is what we're going to end up with here since our fronts are a little bit faster than our middles and then we're matching our middles. Yeah, I already said it, just reiterating, just in case you missed it. All right, let's get the new gears in there and we'll be good to go, I think. Man, I'll tell you, it's always something. So this... Hobby Details rear axle comes with this straight splined ring and pinion. 
And like I said, we're gonna switch over to the Enjora. We have some Enjoras here, the 24T. Now, the 24T is not chamfered on the edge like this is. And so it's creating an issue where we were rubbing on the inside of the diff housing. So we had to go through and grind away inside the diff housing. Now we could have done it to the, the ring here as well, um, but I figure if we ever change these gears or anything, it should work with all the aftermarket gears. So we went ahead and ground away at this. We used our Dremel. We just have like this kind of sharper pointed um, grinding, uh, not really a wheel, but whatever, tip. And then we were able to get in there to keep it nice and square, as square as possible and just grind away a little bit of the inside here, okay? So we were able to try to make a little bit more clearance and now we don't rub. Before we were, we couldn't even get the uh, gear in there. Now we can. And um, we got plenty of freedom of movement now, but it was just barely rubbing. And it was rubbing on the, not even, you can kind of see here. Sorry guys, some of you probably don't care about this, but you can kind of see here, it wasn't rubbing on the edges, right? Like the outside right there. Like it wasn't rubbing on the back side of it. It was rubbing right at the corner edge, right? And where it kind of dips in here, how oh, it's angled. It's got like a little curve. They should have just tried to square it off a little more, but I see they, they've got a hole here for the screw. So we did not get to that hole. So that's good, but we did have to go pretty, pretty deep into there um, all the way around just to get that to not bind up in there. So now we should be good, but you can see we took off quite a bit all the way down in there and all the way on the bottom here. This whole section needed to be kind of cleaned out to make room for the aftermarkets. Obviously their stock one worked just fine, but it's chamfered on the edges. And so there was plenty of room in there for that, but we wanted to use the Enjora. So I just wanted to show you that that is something we had to do, but again, don't be scared to get in there and do some work. You know, just don't, don't overcut it. You know, don't overgrind. We ground off, we tested, we tested. Oh, there's a little bit of rubbing. And actually even the Enjora has a little bit of imperfection and it, wob it kind of wobbles, not much, but as I spin this thing, I can feel it smooth and then it's got a little bit of touching. I can feel it touching, it rubs just a little bit and then it's smooth again and it touches, which tells me there's some imperfection in the gear itself. It's kind of moving in and out like this as it spins, right? It's got it's at a little bit of an angle on the gear versus the bearings. So that's definitely the Enjora gear there. And I tried another one, same exact thing, the other Enjora. Um, so there's just something a little bit off in their machining, but again, normally you would never notice and it's not a big deal, but when it's like you're rubbing because the tolerances and the axle housing are off, you do notice. And so it's interesting that both have a little bit of issues, but again, that's kind of what this hobby is about getting in there and don't be scared to uh, clean this up and grind things down and make it work. Right. And again, we could have chose to grind down this and chamfer the edge of this, put it on our Dremel or drill and then kind of just to clean this up, sand it down. But we chose to go with the axle housing just because I don't want to do it on every set of gears, right? The gears work everywhere else. So it's the axle housing that's the bigger issue here. So as long as you don't come through the outside, you should be good. And we are good now. All right, everything's smooth and buttery. You can see our underdrive and overdrive situation now. The two rears are going to be the same. This guy will be a little faster. Let's see him catch up. There, we're caught up. And now we're going. So not super fast, the rig's uh, definitely slower, but it's super heavy. And so we're definitely gonna be kind of a rock monster here with this guy. I'm not gonna be trailing a ton just cause it's so heavy. Um, and again, not super fast, but uh, should be fun. We just need to get our other set of wheels and tires to finish up our six and then uh, some flubs. So we'll do another video on the flubs, probably showing them off for these 1.33s. And then we gotta get a body. I don't, again, I don't know what body we're gonna run. I was thinking the new Enjora body. I'm not sure. We're probably not gonna show it in this video. I'm just gonna get this guy going. We'll show a little bit of running without the body on it, or I'll just put a defender body on it without it having the back or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll probably do another video showing it with the body. I don't know, we'll see. Let's, uh, let's get these wheels and tires on when they get here. The next day. We got our slime balls in. These things are so good. So we're gonna talk about these just real quick for a second. I have a whole video talking about them right over here if you wanna check that out. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you don't know what the slime ball inserts are about. Flub RC has been doing these for a while. They were kind of the first to market with a really good, um, I guess, public 
publicly available insert that uh, was being sold on retail. Because I think there were some, possibly some designs before. Again, don't quote me on this. I'm not 100% sure. I think there have been some in the past, especially in one tenth scale, but they were very rudimentary. And these have a ton of design time and testing and just tons of thought that goes into them. There's a bunch of different styles as well. Uh, this is a single stage for these types of the, the size wheel and tire. There's also a dual stage. Anyway, that video will show you everything you need to know. Um, but we're just going to do the basics here. So these guys, they install rotating this way basically the fins or fingers grabbing into the direction you're going they have something called forward propulsion technology which as you roll it you can actually feel it try to push itself forward so that's pretty cool kind of bunches up on the back and pushes it forward very very cool so these are going to go in here like so and then whenever we do slime ball inserts in a set of tires we try to mark those tires in a way that uh, we know which direction the insert needs to go So we just take our little chrome pin here and we're going to mark an arrow like that, just so we know it goes that way. Okay. These uh, inserts were specifically made, I don't know if we mentioned it earlier, but they're specifically made for these 1.33s. Um, Love RC did not have 1.33 sized inserts, so we had to send them out. That's what we're, we've been waiting on. We had to send out a, a wheel, 1.33 DJ crawler wheel, and then the tires that they offer, and then uh, they were able to create the correct size inserts for these guys. So super stoked for this. You just want to make sure they're centered on your ring, and then you should be good to go. Oh no, our, ink, our paint didn't dry, but that's okay. We still get the idea we know which direction it's going so i'm gonna get this mounted up and then i will show you kind of the the difference here between slime balls and regular foams it's it's tremendous guys it's it's ridiculous you'll you're gonna you'll love this all right guys here we go it's all mounted up these three are flub inserts i still gotta swap over these three but watch this difference this is gonna be hard because this truck is long and my my workspace is only so so deep but here we go so here oh, here's the the front remember this side's flub this side's foam look at this slop how crazy i'm not even really pushing down very hard here i'll push hard <laughs> like i'll even try to make it look bias here i'll push down here Look at that. <laughs> Look at this side over here. And I'm pushing from this. Like, it's nuts, guys. And then, here, we'll go to the side view here. They're still squishy. See that? They still conform. They just, the side is stiff. So you can see here, I'm dragging it towards, right? Towards and away. Flip over to here. They go like down to the rim a wheel how crazy Blech. but the flub side it's stiff like it's going to help the side hilling so much here just try to hold it there can you see this maybe again it's too long for my workspace it's hitting on all the stuff back there <laughs> all right so there's a little side hill there again i'm just holding it up and then a little side hill there. <laughs> Jeez. That's crazy. And again, this is a suit. Like, I'm not even touching it. This is a super heavy truck, guys. So that's that's why we needed the inserts. Makes such a difference, guys. So we got to get these, these floppy sloppies swapped over to our remaining slime balls. And then, uh, yeah, I think we'll be ready. To go drive it around a little bit we gotta get our body uh yeah and that'll be coming up in another video we're gonna change out the esc and the body um, because i hate the traxxas electronics with a passion they're just uh, i don't know i think they could be so much better in my opinion the traxxas receiver and transmitter are like the worst of all of the ready to runs at least at least the 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 transmitter the remote itself the remote is is no good um this has got pretty good smooth brushed 
you know, slow crawl and modulation, especially if you change it over to the crawler gears. But it's just it's so basic. Like, it doesn't even have an extra channel in it. Like, it's channel two transmitter and receiver. No light control. Like, I absolutely hate that. Like, why can't they can't even give you an on and off for the lights? Come on. You have to push the button to do it. Ridiculous. Anyway, all right. Uh, let's get these in there and we're going to go drive. Well, there we have it. The flubs are awesome. The six by six is awesome. Uh, this guy has a ton of weight, so it's just, uh, it kind of can do some kind of crazy things. Unfortunately, we had one of the sickest shots I think we had ever shot when we were driving this thing and it wasn't recording. We recorded maybe like five to seven minutes or we thought we were recording of footage and there was like a two minute little span of hitting the, one of the big rocks and it was just sick. And it was literally like you could see the flubs working and the six by six working. It was like twisted and like it was just nutso and it was so sick and we came out of it perfect and crossed a gap and floated over like a land bridge. It was so sick and we didn't record it. I know I'm telling you and you're like. You're like, no pics, no proof, right? <laughs> I get it. Um, but anyway, we just wanted to show a little bit of this. We are going to throw a body on here. We do have the Enjora IJ40 coming along with 
the new ESC, the MB100. I do not like this ESC, so we're going to throw a new ESC and receiver in this guy. Um, hopefully get a little bit better throttle control, less mushiness. I mean, it's big and heavy and long, so it's going to be mushy regardless. But hopefully with the Enjora motor and the uh, MB100 ESC, should be good. Um, but yeah, the 6x6, because that's what you hear about, that's what it's about. Pretty slick. Um, pretty fun. Uh all the parts you need to do it. And then, of course, the flubs just make the rig really work because it's so heavy. We might lighten it up at some point. I don't know. Um, could probably do without the brass links, to be honest. Plus, I'd like to get the links to match, right? Like, the, the links are different on the main rig versus back here. So maybe some matching links. I have some ideas. So keep an eye out for that stuff, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell, all those things. And, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for our body that's coming the esc we're gonna do a body esc video and then we may do something like i said with the links at some later point i'm not sure right now i'm kind of happy with where it's at but we may change it up you never know all right guys get out there build something awesome build a car build a course build a community and then smash it crash it and bash it but don't break the expensive parts peace mm -hmm.